Hello, welcome. To liking that high and tight. <laughs> <laughs> liking that high and tight. Thank oh, you. the hair. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Liking that high and tight. This is the way it's going to try. <laughs> All right, round number two. Um, All right, hi. Welcome to Royal Path. Should put that in there anyways. Uh, what the the first one? I think this all should be in there first. Oh, it, it, no, it's it. It's it. So, hey, I'm Andrew, and then I'm going to ask Cyprian and Father Turbo. I don't have a question. I thought all day, and I've been kind of kind of ringing myself. I can't, I couldn't think of a good one. So I'm just going to ask, what have you guys been, what kind of music have you guys been listening to? I... You know, what's interesting? I've been, tr- I have been trying to find something to listen to. Over the, it's weird that you bring that up because this is something it it, that it's wow, what a specific question and how what how interesting. Literally last week, I was thinking to myself, I just I cannot find anything to listen to. Yeah, yeah, I did that when I got sober. um, Shockingly, I had to stop listening to death and black metal all the time because you know, yeah, that's a shock. It took me way longer than it should have for me to realize, like, oh, I need to explore this stuff. And I literally had to pray because I was like, I've been so entrenched in that coffin for a while. Like, it was pretty hard for me to dig my way out to be able to find, like, other stuff to listen to. I ended up having to pray, and I got, you know, like, kind of known, like, three or four different risks that kind of shot me in a different direction. So, honestly... I just prayed, and there's been a couple of times where I prayed. Bonty right now, music. I find something. Mm-hmm. And see. But you have you just been listening to nothing? Yeah, yeah. Nothing. That was your answer last time because I've asked this question twice now. And the no, first because, time, let me no because you know what happens. What happens is I go and I I try to like see. I try to see what I kind of like sample genres that i have really really liked in the past and sort of see where they're at now like if i haven't checked in on them in a couple of years or whatever and i did this the other day and it was all horrible yeah yeah it was all terrible i was like okay so and and there's not really anything like for like two years ago, the sort of up and coming sounds that were coming out of Africa were like really good out of South Africa and Nigeria were like the urban stuff was really good. And now it's degraded. It's like shiny pop cheese and it's horrible. And I just I don't know if somebody wants to suggest to me something. I like new stuff. Like oh. I like to explore like that. Well, because I was a DJ for many years, right? So like I like to like what's what's bubbling up, what's really artistic, what's good, what's got a kernel of soul in it, and and is I see is moving forward. There's I I don't know if somebody wants to suggest to me in the comments something I'll take a listen. But you know I'm what? Giving up for right now. Something that kind of helped me get out of my rut too is I stopped listening according to genre, and I started just like exploring like just whatever. And you know it was a big help actually. I don't know if you're really into it. But YouTube actually ended up really helping me get into ambient stuff. And uh, like, just like, oh, yeah, I've been in yeah. That. And yeah. Um, that was one of the breaks I kind of took away because it was like, I ended up in this whole different area that I was like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I like this. You know, for like, and, well, but, he, and but then, here's the problem I have with ambient stuff, though, Andrew. The problem I have with ambient stuff is to me, it's like I'm kind of to get back to a conversation that we had. It's almost like if I'm if I'm doing ambient chill stuff, it's almost like I'm listening to music just to listen to music. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like the people who need to have like Fox News on in the background in their house while they're doing stuff. 
But, and I, I don't, that's not my relationship with music. You know what? It gives like if, I'm listen, if I'm listening to music, I'm listening to me. That's what I'm doing in that moment is I'm engaging with the music. You know, it feels a little bit like me and I, I'm the person that brought up ambient music, but I still listen to it. But in the book, do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep, which the movie mm -hmm. Blade Runner was based off of, they have like an emotion box. I can't remember what it's called, mm -hmm. but it like it, it sets like the emotional vibe for you know what's you know in the house or whatever. And to me, ambient music sometimes seems like that. Uh, it's, like, it's just music in general. Well, yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. It's just music in general. Yeah. Yeah. What are you listening to, Father? Um. Yeah, I've been kind of in a weird space because I've I've been painting most of my like what i know like time i'm free time so um i've been listening to a lot of there's this um serbian chanter um Pav, i just call him pavle but i think his name is like pavle Sintjevic. but he's this really great um like serbian byzantine chanter um a lot of sleeping giant uh like going to the gym today. So, oh, okay. so, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that's, mm -hmm. that's like been really helpful. Um, and then just, you know, I just kind of been listening to just a lot of just different choirs, like the St. Elizabeth choir has a good album just cause I've been in the temple, like over time, just mm -hmm. painting. So just a lot of different chant, but like, I just listened to, I'm doing a lot of, I've just, it's been so wonderful. I'm digesting a ton of stuff. Um, so I really, I'm really not listening to much music. If this makes sense, I'm listening to music right now, either to go to the gym or to give my, to give my, my news a break. You know what I mean? So, uh, yep. um, cause I'm just listening to, you know, tons of like Athenite audio, you know, stuff. A lot of just, you run that from Joseph, Sophroni, you know, been been going through the Philokalia again, um, and all audio stuff, you know. So, um, so that does that make sense? I'm just I put some yes. music on to give myself a rest and to let what I take in to digest. So that I'm just I'm not just consuming, you know. Um, mm -hmm. It's almost like a spiritual aperitif, if you will. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I think. Well, yeah, to answer that uh, question, I, I mean, uh, well, yeah, like I was mentioned. Eating bass? Huh? <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. I don't know. You know, Pete Bass? <laughs> Sorry, oh. forgive me. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yeah, these two British cats, these two geezers, and they, oh! they, they drop bars. Oh! Yeah, you know oh, that was tight. Yeah, that yeah. was tight. Those guys are so good. Yeah, yeah. that was actually yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that was cool. Um, <laughs> shocking yeah. how shocking how good those guys are. So good oh, for real. No, so it, good. Adelaide, they're like, incredible. They're yeah. incredible. And yeah. actually, the lines that they write, the rhymes the their bars. I mean, they're That's legit. Good. Like, oh, their the lyrical skill. I mean, the delivery is incredible too, but the the lyrics. Oh, like pff, legit! <laughs> I, so love the re I love the I love the reaction because... videos of those yeah, guys. the reaction like, videos are great. People... But you know, it's crazy. You know why it's so legit? I mean, because yeah, he's like he was like a the, um, I can't I don't know which one's which, but the real tall guy. I think he's like the Baz. That's Baz. Baz. I think is he's the guy who kicked guy, it yeah. off. Whatever, and he's just like yeah. his kids. I think his kid. They're like the, both their kids are thugs. They're like they're okay. Easter thugs, like okay. legit, whatever. But, anyways, it's interesting to me because the thing about it is just like on the artistry level, what's crazy is it's so authentic in the sense oh, yeah. that they're taking actual like London East End like lingo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean. They're not just yeah. kind of like mimicking the externals of hip hop, but it's actually no. like that's yeah, great. Every once in a while, I'll be like. Man, there's nothing left that music can offer. It's nothing new, and then something like that will happen. I'll be like, okay, I have not salad seen that dressing. Before. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like salad dressing, salad dressing. But then someone comes up with something. It's like this is a good salad dressing. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, See, yeah, that's the th this is what I'm talking about. That's the type of stuff that I'm out in the world looking for. Mm -hmm. And it's just so I feel like, oh, we've I'm not we're not we've had this conversation before. You know what I mean? We've had this conversation. Medium is the message. Yeah. But like when 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 all of underground music was on vinyl, like even into the early 2000s, because of the cost of cutting vinyl, it was all good. Yeah, like you could walk into a record store that sold vinyl, and it, everything was good. Yeah, really. Otherwise, I mean, it would never have made it into the store. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. Probably Wings are in there. I mean, like Wings are terrible. I mean, Wings suck. <laughs> like the band Wings, like probably pretty terrible. I mean, I, I don't. No, I'm I'm I mean, not I'm, I'm not talking about just any record store, or, and I'm not talking about like a vintage vinyl store. I'm talking about a store where everything in there is new. But it, but because it was all indie labels, it was all being put out on vinyl. This is it. This is nineties and early two thousands. Yeah, sure. All right. right? Trust everything, that everything was good. Um. All right. Well. Oh no, that is the one thing I want to say is a shout out to our choir director. I've been listening to a lot of this is it as well. Uh, Lorena McKennett. That uh, our choir director turned my wife onto her, and then like now I've been listening. So that was it. I just wanted. Oh, then Father, you know the I butcher the name. The female Serbian chanter. She seems kind of famous. The Divina, Vina, Bujelovic, uh, Bujelovic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh... I'm sorry, I butchered that. I know I did, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, that's her name. Do you have you listened to her ever? Like her chance. I have one of her albums. Okay. I, I got from um, you know, iTunes, whatever. But, yeah. Mm. It's it's tight. I mean, it's one of the ones that um yeah, it it's like uh sometimes with Chan, like sometimes I want like and it's really it's when I'm really spiritually struggling. I want Chan you can like hear them like monks making mistakes in the background like you can almost tell, it's like, not mistakes it's not mistakes it's like no, like like coughing i can hear like that's, them coughing that's soul, like, that's soul. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah i yeah, want yeah. that i'm like no i want yeah. like they just yeah. stuck it recorded at the bottom of like a vesper service on mount athos and you can like hear them kind of like talking to each other like mm -hmm. during it like mm -hmm. you know whatever whatever they're coordinating and then sometimes there's like i want like that like really like cinematic like easy to digest well produced chant yeah i never that. want that. i never like like i never want that um the only time there's the only thing like that i i digest the only thing i like that i engage like that is um father apostolos hill his legendary album the gates of repentance it's legendary if you guys haven't heard it hmm. you should okay, you should pick it up it. father apostolos hill gates of repentance he's got an incredible voice he's such a crooner but like that's like and just that particular album, like, that's the only thing, you know, that I like to engage like that. But the majority of stuff I like to engage where I'm like, it's it's like, oh, they're praying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not, not the mm. performance of it. When it starts to lend, like, lead into the performance side of things, I'm, I kind of, like, lose. Well, I actually had a question about that. Because remembering that, like, <clears throat> a lot of stuff that happens in... Greece and Serbia, you know, country steeped in orthodoxy. It's natural that, like, some of the, like, we've mentioned sometimes, like, the more, like, going for, like, tackier aspects of orthodoxy that kind of are in these countries. A performer who, like, a monk who stands on a stage and, like, uh, performs yeah. hymns and stuff like that. Is there something that maybe is just lost on us Americans that's kind of Yeah, I mean... It's like that one priest I'm really into, Father uh, Father Alexander Stardinsko. Talking about the synth, that synth stuff. I mean that oh, his stuff is just great. Yeah. I mean his stuff's good, but that album in particular, it's and you know what's crazy is, I mean this is like a political thing, right? But YouTube, like iTunes, pulled it. So like when I went to go right. listen to it, it's like oh, this is no longer available in your country and region. Um. Ooh. Yeah. Weird, right? So, copyright um, issues, maybe. Maybe I don't know. It's weird though. It's still on Spotify, but huh. 
Yeah, but anyways, like he's one of those guys. I mean, he you know he'll I, I've seen stills of him like doing stuff on stage with a guitar, and like I just give it a pass. It's just different, you know what I mean? That's it's kind of what I because you know. But like, again, but again, I think I think the thing is for me, just personally, it, like for him, what he's doing, especially with that out with that last album, there's something about for me. I mean, like. For Cyprian's wife, for Valentina, it may just be like whatever because she just yeah. grew up in it. She's like, oh yeah, she may yeah. even roll her eyes at it. You know what I mean? I don't know because it's just it's just culturally, it's just whatever for her. But for me, it's not so much the novelty of it, but to some degree, it's like, oh wow, you know, like this is it. It's bringing an aspect of the kind of it's not so much the perform the performative, but it engages the emotions in a way that isn't appropriate for church music. So it, mm, that that's, that's the thing is it engages the emotions mm, in a way that is not appropriate for church music. And so in that way, I really enjoy it because again, it's safe. Like, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I think this is good to get into because someone had brought this up, you know, and I just want to, because I, I know it's, it, well, for most of the people it doesn't because, you know, we have an audience, whatever, but there's a couple of people who come in every once in a while and I've gotten emails from people, which is totally great, but like they've been kind of scandalized. They're like, you know, help me understand how you can listen to whatever from uh, like Black oh, Sabbath that. or something. Oh, that, which, which oh, is, that comment. Which is whatever, you know what I mean? But like, because for some people, I mean, for some people, I'm being super charitable, like they're still struggling because they're still mm-hmm. hooked. They're still hooked on stuff. And like mm-hmm. they have way more terrible, crappy, bad, salacious hip hop or pop or R&B in their mind or metal, whatever it is, than than Christ. So for them, it's like, yeah, man, you need to like go hard, get off the stuff and whatever. And if you never go back to it, great. But I think the thing I explain to people, and, and this is the thing is some people might be surprised. It's like, yeah, you know, I can be like, oh yeah, Pete and Boss, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But like, I mean, you can ask anyone well, who knows me close enough. It's like, I'm pretty particular about stuff, man, because I'm serious about what I, you know, it's like I try to practice what I preach. So I try to keep my house clean. You know what I mean? So like, I don't sit there. I don't sit there and put on like Pete and Boss. I will not listen to that passively. You know what I mean? And I don't listen to it all the time. It's kind of like, oh, it comes across. I'm like, oh, I sit there and I engage it for the art form that it is. Right. But I would never put that on passively because it'll inflame the passions. I don't want stuff getting through my filter. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, no, and nor would you allow it to be part of your identity. I think Not that's another part about Not it. Right? You, can look at, you can look at something as an observer yeah. and see, especially as a musician, and, yeah. and see the elements of it and appreciate it as for the form yeah. without saying, oh, but it's, it's who I am. I'm part of the scene. I'm part of this that's identity. Right. That's right. That's right. And that's super key because it's like, you know, it's like, look, I'm a spiritual father. I'm a, I'm a father. I got kids. So it's like, it's this thing I like being in the world. It's like, that's how I try to guide people to be in the world, but not of the world. It's like, okay, like you can't avoid this stuff. And the people who tell you to act like you can, those people forgive me. I, and I'm, I'm looking forward to having some responses to this one. Like, I don't really think people can be guided that way. You just, you can't, because what you're doing, you're setting up people. I've already seen it. See, this is, this is another thing. I've already seen what happens. I've seen the guy who goes, because I've been that guy. I've seen the guy who goes like, I'm getting rid of everything and this and that. And then that guy ends up crashing three times as hard because yeah. he's, he's not doing it out of love. He's doing it out of fear. And, 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 and that will, that will cause a vacuum to appear. And that vacuum is not going to be filled with the love of God and grace like they think it is. You see what I'm saying? It, it's it's very much how like the father's guide people, um, let's say novices, to not be austere, like, ex- like extreme and austere in their ascetic endeavors because you're setting yourself up for a type of fall. So Saint Saint Nicetus of Nov- Novgorod, Novgorod, forgive me, Father, and and his yeah. abbot saying, no, you cannot yeah. be a hermit. And, yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, you any, may not. Yeah, you can't. You can't. And so so it's the same thing. It's like we're living in a particular time and that, and I'm just, I'm very aware of that. And so I, you know, one of the things I think is problematic is like, there's people who 
I don't know about anyone else. I just know my reality. And my reality is here in Kansas City and the people that I guide are people that have either gone through stuff, are going through stuff, or they live somewhere where it's like real. I'm not ta- I don't I'm not talking to the person in like Pleasant Springs, Idaho. Like good for you. You have cows and you do whatever you do. I'm talking to people who are having like real issues, you know what I'm saying? And so the thing is is like the reality of if you've been through something or you're living in the world of the reality, like to try to give people a false sense of like, just escape and do whatever that doesn't, mm-hmm. that that's not, that's not real. And it sets people up for the wrong thing. So that being said, I'm like, look, this is how it goes. Like, here's how you, here's how you can try to be vigilant. Here's how you can filter things. And like music's a big part of it. That's why, I mean, there's just certain stuff I will not touch. Like, Again, I just keep, I'll go back to it again. Like the Pete and Boss thing, it's like different because there's like a London thing. They're old. Like, it's just, it's a different context. And it's so like, people don't understand this. Let's explain this real quick. Pete and Boss are these two old geezers. They're like 70 and 60 year old dudes from like, I'm assuming they're from the East End, right? Yeah, they're from London for sure. They're from they're London for guys. sure. Yeah. And, and they're these old English dudes who are just dropping crazy sick bars. So yeah, the, the, the the shock and the novelty of this caliber of artistry with hip hop and it being these old English dudes, that spectacle, quote unquote, that's what gets me in the gates there. And I'm like, okay. But interestingly enough, it also allows me to have a filter because I'm not yeah. I, I'm not engaging it passively. So we're not talking about like, hey, you know, I'm I'm speaking to you right now. If you're like a 19 year old kid and you listen to the real path. Like you really should not be listening to like I don't mumble know, rap, mumble rap at all. Like you shouldn't listen to drill rap. You know Tyler no. the Creator, that guy can kick rocks. You know what I mean? Like Go on. yeah, like all none of that stuff. You shouldn't listen to any of it ever, right? Mm-hmm. Any of it ever, right? It's already ruined one of my kids. Like don't ever listen to like any of that stuff, right? Um, and you, and all you can go further, you got to be really careful with a lot of like heavy stuff. Like there's like, you can't, pl- like you can't play with the fire of like, there's just certain black and certain things like you just, you just shouldn't be listening to it. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, don't listen to mayhem, don't listen to Burzum, like just don't do it. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's just not worth it because you don't have the filter. You can't catch it. And if you want the energy and the violence of the music, there's stuff that you can listen to, which will give you that, but it won't have the insidious and subtle influence of the lyrics that are infecting you imperceptibly to your own, to your awareness. Right. I'm just saying like, I'm not telling people to go mm-hmm. listen to whatever. I'm just saying like, Hey, if you're, like be responsible. And you know, that's, that's the reality. So it's the same thing with a lot of things. It's like if you're struggling with just speaking, I feel like that this is something you can watch you since on. That if you're struggling with like the lyrical content, be like that you're afraid of like listening to unblack and white metal or whatever, like Christian stuff. Like, oh but man, that stuff's so weak. I was like, well, why is it weak? I was like, well, I'll get kind of made fun of. It's like, because, you know, I can't, you know, I don't listen to Mayhem. I can't, you know, and even then there's a whole spectrum of black metal that while not Christian is not satanic. That's like, that's okay. I mean, in my, you know, it's just, there's still some stuff I listen to, but like, ultimately like that's pride because a lot of times you can't really super understand what the person is saying in the first place. So if you can't listen to like Frost Harder, whatever their name is, mm-hmm. because you're just like, well, I can't wear a Frost Harder shirt to like an entombed show. Like I'm going to get beat up. Well, I don't, I don't really know what to tell you because then it's like, you're kind of pointing out what the bigger issue. The bigger and issue. that's exactly yeah. the thing is like, what you almost need to transcend to is not like, you got to get rid of the vanguard. Cause like, you know, what's interesting thing is, you can't really actually enjoy music until you're kind of out of that anyways. As long as you're being dictated and kind of corralled by the vanity of trying to fit in with something, you're never actually going to be able to enjoy. You know, it, it's kind of like, you know, this is the thing is like, I know people say whatever. I'm just going to say like, I am super, not just because it's the teaching of the church. I'm just telling you like, 
people should not have premarital sex. It's just you should not do it. People have done it. People do it, whatever. I'm just telling you. Because the thing is, is not just because it's, well, number one, sexual morality is like a huge issue. I mean, that's a whole thing right there. You, you know, you pick up bugs and all kinds of stuff. And I don't mean just DD. I'm talking about spiritually. You know what I mean? But like what it is, is it keeps you from something so much greater. It, and, and, and that's the thing is like, we were talking about this on Sunday, I think a little bit, but you know, it kind of clicked with me recently and I'm going to be hammering some people with this because it's, you know, I'm like, Praise God, because it's it's really the fruit of just praying and, and really trying to endeavor something. But I've realized, I think the key for, and forgive me if I'm going around the mountain too much. If you need to bring me back, go ahead. But like, I think the key, and this, this applies to a lot of things, but like, for instance, like self-abuse and the pornography thing, what a demon, what a demon. But like, I think one of the big problems is, and this, and again, like this came to me recently. I think the problem is that there's just such an emphasis on trying to stay away from something versus like, you know, like trying to attain something else. So in other words, we were talking about this, like, you know, like the no fap guys, you know, and like the Mm -hmm. the semen retention cats, it's like, okay. Mm -hmm they're pursuing the benefits of something, right? And so the thing is, is like the Orthodox Christian man will have the same, will receive the same benefits as the no fap semen retention guy. But the difference mm-hmm. is the Orthodox Christian man, if he's, if it's not just like, I don't, you know, I'm tired of falling to self abuse and but cause like the demons want you to fall into despair. That's, that's the, that's the big trip with that. They want you to despair and just give up. Okay. That's great. But a big reason why that happens is because without vision, the people perish. And so the thing is Mm -hmm. that that young man who stuck with it, he doesn't have a vision of what he wants. So here's the thing is he's not he doesn't he's not thinking to himself. And this is this thing I realized. These men, they're not in in, this is my fault. I'm owning it like this is I'm you know, so if you hear it, just get ready because this is what I'm going to start telling people. You're not pursuing chastity. You're yep, just that's right. You're just you're just trying to keep from falling into a bad habit, but you're not pursuing chastity because you don't know, you're not aware of it, you don't believe the benefits that come from it. So, in other words, instead of being like, I just don't want to fall, I'm tired of like whatever. How about like, man, I want grace. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I want grace, I want communion with God, I want to be holy, like I want. You know what I mean? I want these things versus I don't want to fall into this. I don't want to be that. That changes everything because I know in my life where I've had success, spiritual success, not worldly Mm -hmm. ambition, whatever, but even implies the world ambition is wanting the thing, not, not just running from something. It's like we talked about before. I didn't become Orthodox because I hated Protestantism. See, that's another thing for me. It's like, I'm not a disaffected, bitter protestant quite the opposite Mm -hmm. you know what i mean i'm grateful for that it's like i didn't marry juliana because i hated you know Lori, right Mm -hmm. like you you don't marry someone because you hate that you disdain someone else and don't get me wrong there's a place for disdain i'm all about disdaining things but (laughs) you know i think i think in this case though like this is this is a little bit of a shift because when you want something like when you want christ then all those other things become so much more simpler. You don't even like pay attention to them because it's, it becomes self-evident. It's like, I'm not going to even, I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have a tension or a struggle over should I listen to Tyler creator or not? It, it's just mm-hmm. duh. I'm not, it's just, yep. it's not going to enter in my mind. Like there's just yep. certain things. I don't, I don't wrestle over like, Oh, should I listen to fill in the blank? I don't do that because like, I want Christ. I want grace. I don't, I don't want my, I don't want my wedding garment soiled. And when you don't want some, when you, when, not when you just don't want your wedding garment soiled, but you're like, I want a, I want a, you want to be at the feast. I want to be at the feast. You want, you want to be at the feast. I want to be, and I want to be crispy there. I want to be crispy when I'm at the feast. That, and father, there's a, there's a, there's an objective. People are going to balk. There are some people who are going to balk at this because they don't have, I think, the frame of reference. But I, 
so I, I'll I'll give an example. My my so I played beach volleyball for many years, right? And was ranked and rated and played in the California Beach Volleyball Association. Used to play tournaments every weekend. And my younger brother, who's four years younger than me, played also. But we were both adults at the time, right? Now the thing is, my brother and I, you would think we would be and we lived together at the time. He was going, he was finishing his PhD at UCLA. I was living in LA. We lived together at Echo Park. You would think that we would be be able to be good volleyball partners together. We could not play together. And the reason we could not play together, and my brother and I talked about this, and he articulated it, was because I played to win, and he played not to lose. Mm. For him, the worst thing that could happen was that he would lose and lose badly. Mm. And for me, the worst thing that w- that I could do is that I didn't do everything that I needed to do to win, that mm-hmm. I didn't play as hard as I could. Mm-hmm. And those two styles do not match. You know what's crazy, though? Can I say something to you, Cipri, and forgive me for, Please, go for ahead. putting you, go ahead. for exposing go ahead. you to everybody? Go ahead. <laughs> but you know, I'm fascinated. We've talked about this before. And not that there's like some sort of formula, right? But it's just conversation. Right. Like we've talked about, like, why is it that some people were able to see through 2020? Some weren't. You know what I mean? We've talked about true seekers, right. this and that. I think this is another aspect of to maybe why. I mean, I know it's personal, which just won't go too deep. But one of the reasons why maybe you're following Christ and your brother isn't. See that? Right. Uh, for sure. It's because, see, that attitude of, like, I just want to know I was able to do everything I could that is very much like the the orthodox christian ethos of like i'm willing to i'm willing to lose if it means winning like 100%. winning <laughs> does that make sense winning yes. isn't like isn't the award winning is like yeah i did the thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and no, it's and, like, and, almost like it's effort driven not results driven well yeah i mean well, there there were games father there were games that i lost that i walked out of like I am so happy with with yeah. that, with what just happened. Yeah. And there were games that I won where I walked away like that was BS. Yeah. What yeah. was I doing out yeah. there? Like, why didn't yeah. I do the things that I needed to do even yeah. though I won? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's a, and this is a great example. That's the type of thing that see to me that articulates a lot of the a lot of the, the problem that we're always trying to wrestle with, like in our project. Because that's the problem with the cat, the killiest, the killiest who doesn't think he's a killiest. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, man, like you don't you don't get it. Like being able to enter like, yeah, you may have won the thing, but like something's not right. You know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. So, at home, what's a killiest um, again? What's a killiest again? Yeah. So killiasm, it's it's that heresy of like looking for the thousand year reign on Earth, like an earthly one. Right. Which is so funny because there's that one guy, Jim Bob, whatever, not actual Jim Bob, but like some other guy who's like, I think you guys are the ones we're actually looking for earthly. Whatever. Anyways, that guy's great. But uh, <laughs> shout out to you, um, Charles. Whatever oh. your name is. So like so the thing is, is, uh, yeah, that reality of, of entering into something with the sense of. And that's that's Zar Lazar, right? It's like, yeah, I mm-hmm. lost, but you know what? What's been revealed to me of, of the real thing that's that's what's most important. And I think it's super huge because that is also the thing that you start seeing, like that transition out of you know Christendom into being a Christian, you know, mm-hmm. um, being you know a disciple of Christ, being you know, turning into a son out of being a slave, like all that stuff. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, it's huge. It's huge. Well, that's what Father and I had this little conversation yesterday because I'm just now reading uh, the mystery meaning of Bible of Kosovo by marriage. And um, it's, it is absolutely one of the most shocking and powerful books I've ever read in my entire life. Just Nick, St. Nikolai's little 50 pages. St. Eustine's is, is great and absolutely laid the framework but then the minute that saint nikolai starts the conversation between saint lazar and uh of the angel it's like that every because it, it, and it breaks it down into chapters like on why this losing the battle is important 
you know, and like on why injustice is allowed to happen. Basically, Saint Lazar asked the angel a question, and I was telling Father it was a little bit like the um, Saint Paul, like I knew a Christian man that this thing happened to, and like Saint Nicholas kind of presenting this thing, and the feeling I got, and I could be wrong, and it's like, oh, so you like in some way mystically witnessed or somehow experienced this conversation that Saint Lazar had with the angel, because some of it is so wild, and part of it was this whole. Um, he started off with like a very, very mercenary understanding, remembering Father's framework or what Father's talked about, that you love God like a son, which is in which like you love him as a father, you know, or you can love him like a mercenary, which is like what I get out of this relationship or as a slave, which is afraid of being punished. And he started off, at least the way that I perceived it, it was our, started off with a mercenary, mercenary framework of, Angel said, Do you want earthly kingdom and heavenly kingdoms as well? Practically speaking, I mean, he didn't say speaking, but basically, well, the earthly kingdom now, and it won't last forever. And I know the heavenly kingdom lasts for forever. That, and then the angel just like leads into this, like, it's so much more than just that. Like, and the whole re revelation of like the, the, like, the absolute, like, bonkers according to the world nature that like this man is so like venerated in Serbia and what he's known for is losing and it's just so crazy that like that's where the honor comes from because the angel continues to drive like, over and over and over again it is in your losing will find honor it's in but what's crazy losing. but what's actually what's even crazier is that's Jesus but no one sees that like that's what yeah. blows yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I, that's the thing. It's like that. That's Christ, but no one actually sees that trampling down death by death. Like it's you got to die. It, it, <laughs> it's just it's one of those things where we were talking about this on on Sunday too, um, Andrew and I. It's like I think it was Sunday we were talking about it, but like that secret. Which you know, it, it's it's one of those things where it's 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 almost like a uh, belloc, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like it's like oh, it just strikes you. It's you'll people spend forever just you know going back and forth over multiple things, and it's like it's just no, the door's not going to open. And it's like it's only until you're like oh. Okay, so like I really have to like suffer. Okay, like, but father, the enemy. This it's interesting that we get here because I knew that this is where it was going to go. Like, the enemy is always offering, like, at every step of the way, is offering the like, oh no, 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 you don't have to lose though. Mm. You don't actually have to lose. Like, no, 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 no. It's okay. You don't have to lose. Bobby Kennedy, Tulsi Gabbard. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, mm. no, you don't have. No, 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 mm. you don't have to 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 lose. Or uh, what's his name? Ichthyalthes from uh, from the story of uh, the Hot Gates, right? And the Spartans, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. where he gives. Uh, he's like, no, no, no. I'm a ge I'm a generous god, Xerxes. Mm -hmm. What do you want? I want a uniform, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you the goat path to get around and to yep. kill the three hundred. Yep. Right. Yep. And it's yep. like, n no, you don't. You don't have to lose. And it's like, that's what's always, I feel like that's what's always on offer. But the craziest, like the most, I think the most disappointing thing of the last, let's say several months has been individuals. And we all, we know some of them and some of them listen to this podcast, but individuals who over the last four years um, saw, saw the enemy right there saw the evil that was taking place because they saw that evil they they turned and began to orient to christ because they saw that there was a loss they turned and oriented to, to christ and then uh the gold the golden haired alternative came up and oh i don't have to lose and that orientation went like mm -hmm. and i know that now i know that now like we're going to, I tell you, this project, it's important now, but we are going to start to get unsubbed, Father. Yeah. 
yeah, we are well, going to start to get uns we are going to start to get unsubbed and people are going to leave because and you know what's going to be interesting nothing about n- we're not going to say anything new we're well, not going to hold a well, new it's just opinion. like 20 oh. it's just like 20 <laughs> like in 20 that was that was our big thing it was just like in 20 it's like the the thing is it what it really boiled down to is like we didn't change like for here in in, in our community yeah, yeah we didn't change anything like there well, wasn't there wasn't like some kind of like oh but of what's like no the big thing that just riled everybody up was like we just didn't change anything and just like <laughs> that that just that was just the most outrageous like thing and so yeah the same thing it's kind of like yeah like this is just gonna be it, I mean there's not what <laughs> like why like, it's not changing the two now right but I mean we can talk yep. about like. You know, I see. I think this is. I think this is what's interesting, because, like, I don't. I, I don't know. Everyone has their own thing. You know what I mean. But for me, I've been in hostile situations, like real hostile situations. Not kind of like, uh, like I've been in like real hostile situations. So I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. Okay, whatever. But. I would always take the devil I know. No, that's just, I just, and and the other thing is that that's just on a human, that's just on a human mm-hmm. level. That's just like, you know, that's a principle. That's just the principle. That's just being in the yeah. street. That's just being in jail. That's yeah. all those things. That that's just mm-hmm. all those things. Now you just drop down another level as, you know, as striving. I'm not even saying I am striving to be a disciple of the master. Right. And really taking seriously his commandments and being like, no, I, I have no desire to twist his commandments to my own benefit. I have no desire to escape the cross. And where I do, I commit myself to holy violence, like personal violence, spiritual violence against myself. Like that's my personal mm-hmm. commitment, whatever. And like, I don't, people just like, they don't want to talk about that. They're just like, whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I'm just, I'm just going to say this because here's the thing that just blows my mind. It's like, okay, I'm all about like, yeah, yeah, years of peace, whatever. But you know, it's kind of funny. Like you, you run to Joseph, St. Joseph's guy. He's like, in times of peace, prepare yourself for war. That's, and and yeah, that's it. Yeah. Like, that's hey, it. okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, I'm, who isn't happy to have like, yeah, definitely going to be better for your pocketbook the next couple of years, whatever. Like, like, all that well, me, well, yeah. not definitely. It's not yeah. self-evident. That, it's not self-evident. Yeah, fair, <laughs> it's enough. Interesting. fair enough. It's fair interesting. Enough. Um, Father, real quick. The Elvish word for friend is not belong. Belong. Say that, you know, just before someone cracked it. But, but besides that, I mean, I just, I had to go back because someone's going to say something. It's just like, I just wanted to put it out there. It's belong. <laughs> for sure. For sure. You well, gotta was, be willing to lose, Andrew. Right you gotta play to win. <laughs> yeah. I know I'm willing to lose. I know I'm gonna get some heat for that. I'm not worried about that though. <laughs> but it's the that's the thing that pe- people keep coming back to is have you noticed that like the language because every time that one of these things happens, the language starts to change a little bit. And that is mm-hmm. the um the phrases that people that I've seen, like some of the liberals, the lefties losing it or whatever, it's some of the reactions to the election results. And that's like what everyone says is because you needed your pocketbook, like your pocketbook balance. You were tired of your eggs being $6. And so you've given away all women's liberties or whatever to this, to this president or whatever. And it's like, Okay, but when was that the issue? That's not the issue that we've been talking about. The issue we've been talking about is in cultural Mind you that we're we're pretty much talking about Christian quote unquote Christian and more just conservative right wing values versus liberalism. The culture. I mean, are we? Are we? Well, is Donald we, Trump a Christian? He says that he is, but no, he's not. Does Donald Trump go to church? Does he? Does uh, is is he Orthodox? I mean, I think we've made our stance on this clear. It's the red hats versus the blue hairs. I'm not even going to say the Christians versus the you know the. But you whatever. know what's interesting about both? You know what's interesting about both of them? The red hats versus the blue hairs. Like they're they're both wearing a uniform. I know. Well, and that yeah. and that uniform and that uniform is a is a is 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 headgear. 
which is a normal uniform for two teams playing against each other in a sport. But then you have to ask yourself, if I watch the the uh, Dodgers and the Yankees play each other, right, and they're really going after each other, right? But, you know, they split the profits of those tickets of the television revenue because MLB gives them profits. They're both playing for the same team. Yeah. You think they're playing for a different team, but they're both playing for the same team. The team is the MLB. And one can't exist without the other. So here's interesting. The Dodgers, right? The Dodgers used to be in New York. There were no teams on the West Coast. None. And so the, the, they were in Brooklyn. So the Brooklyn Dodgers came out. But guess what? They had nobody to play. And so they brought out the, the New York Giants to become the San Francisco Giants so that the Dodgers would have somebody to play. They're both playing for the same team. The blue hairs and the red hats are quite obviously, it's self-evident that they're playing a sport against each other. And then you got to ask who benefits from the sport. Both of them. The winner and the loser. Yeah, I mean, the, the, to, the, like, the last place team in, in Major League Baseball still gets the television revenue from the first place team. Because here's the thing, and just to kind of jump in, because it's like, whatever. I mean, I guess just cutting to some of the chase. Uh, who's the MLB in this? Who's the three-letter agency? Well, the IDF is the three-letter three agency in this situation. The IDF is going to be the one who's... There you go. It doesn't matter. See, see, this is. I mean, look, I just want to writ I just, large. The ID, IDF writ large, father. IDF, like, writ, IDF writ, writ large. large. IDF writ yeah, large. Yeah, like, yeah, I just yeah. want to get in it because, like, you know, before people, whatever, unsub us and then get out, whatever. Like, I just want. Yeah, like, we're gonna get unsubbed, which is great. I just want to put my boot in, so like, it just where it matters, right? But it's like just before you go, I just want to just be really clear. Like, I, I just, I'm gonna lay it out, right? Like. It doesn't matter which side would have won because the IDF is still going to benefit. And I'm going to tell you something else, too, out there. Project Esther, you know what I'm saying? And all this, like, straight Gestapo, like, and like inverted Gestapo, anti-Semitic language that's coming out. And, like, let's just let's just let's just get after some of this. Right. So do you think it not matters the identity of the church? Like the true thing, not not the living church, not the kind of like. Hey, we'll play the hat, you know, we'll play Ukraine games, all that stuff. I mean, like, look, theologically, we are Israel. Let's just let's just get into it. This is this is what I haven't seen anybody talk about. And so this is I saw I think people will will drop this. real. Certain people will drop this real quick. They want to go there. But like, look, we are Israel. We, the Orthodox Church, like, period, we're we are Israel, period. And so when you start talking about some of these other things, like you got a real problem. You know, one of the things back in the day, back in the day, shout out to um, Deacon uh, Basil. Um, I knew there's this, this is guy, Deacon Basil, which I just have to give him a shout out on that because I have a lot of respect for him. He was like a congressman or something, whatever. I haven't talked to him in like over 10 years. But point being is super conservative guy, you know, religious right, all that stuff, whatever. And uh, we were in the same theological program and we we're talking. And it's like he was a rare gem because he was a man of integrity, meaning he was like, I will change my position to line up with the church if I see that it, I'm wrong. And what it was for him was like he was, you know, standard evangelical Zionist doing the whole thing. Right. No problem. And then when he realized like, oh, number one, oh, the church is Israel. Oh, and number two. Oh, there's actual Orthodox Christians who I've been supporting like the killing of. Okay. And then he, you know, he's like, yeah, I can't, I can no longer in good conscience as an Orthodox Christian support this. I have to put my politics and my economics underneath my identity as an Orthodox Christian, which means I have to identify and stand in solidarity with my brothers and sisters who I'm in communion with, i.e., Arab Arab Christians who are, you know, Palestinian Christians, however you want to, whatever you want. So like the point being is that thing right there, there's a lot of people who like, they're not going to want to talk about, they're not going to look at that. They're going to just sweep it under the rug. But I'm going to tell you something as, th- as things go on, because 
the, the one of the main things that was going to be in the queue, no matter left or right, no matter yep. whether it was be Kamala <laughs> mm-hmm. or it was, you know, or whoever, this was the IDF was going to be the one who wins. And mm-hmm. what are you going to say now? No one's going to say anything to us or to me here now. And it's like, no, you're wrong. It's like, no, because this is a fact. This is this is a fact. And so now. What no, but, but, but father, forgive me what they what they are going to do is they are going to rationalize and mm-hmm. justify mm-hmm. about how it's a necessary evil mm-hmm. that needs to take place mm-hmm. and because there's no way that because because they've they've attached their identity to someone who is acting in a way that is contrary to the church mm-hmm. it is contrary to the church because if 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 the that church doesn't matter. is Israel then the rest of it is all it's so it's ridiculous. But see, Everything so, over there is ridiculous. So an acting contrary to the church doesn't matter. That's irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's not I mean, the, the, the funny the funny thing, Father, is that it's like, you know, it's interesting, you know, the this this idea of I have to put my politics and my economics sort of the underneath my identity as being orthodox but that's actually i think it's a false dichotomy Mm -hmm. because my experience has been being orthodox has has cleaned up my politics and my economics Mm -hmm. greatly Mm -hmm. and i think we talked to andrew you brought this up the other day that it was like what would it look like if a country economically for a country, if mm-hmm. when a country is fall fo- is, is all orthodox and they're following the church, well, are the they problem, better off economically well, well, or problem, worse off? Well, the problem with, with what the way I, I posited it and thank you for putting out so I can clean it up is the way I posited it is in the context of our context of the binary. That, right, that's, right, right, right. That's no, what I, I mean that. by I like, that. you know I what I mean? That. It's like, but I'm glad you're saying because a lot of people don't like like here's the thing I realized a couple weeks ago. I know it's just like, well, whatever. Just being really kind of self-aware, like being self-aware of like our audience or whatever, but even ourselves, because it's like, you know, I'm sure that's part of the reasons like people realize like there's large portions of these conversations where like we don't care. Like we're just actually talking. Right. That's part of it. <laughs> so like. Well, but, th- th- thankfully, Andrew will come in and and yeah, you know make yeah. sure that we can still stay connected to the audience. Yeah, like that so, <laughs> Like there's a lot of people who are like, "What the is he? That was that a, like a, <laughs> what did he just say? What did he just say? Yeah, exactly. But but the thing I was gonna say is like, it, and I know this is gonna be like, whoa, like duh. It, it's it's so similar to when I remember the transition into coming to the church, and I was like had that Bible study at the tattoo shop, whatever. And I, I'll never forget that moment where I had, I was like studying and I was going to do this series because people were leaving. Um, they were getting tore apart by this um, inter- this philosophy professor, just basic one on one stuff, just getting pulled apart. So I was like, well, let me do a series on like why we believe what we believe and like fundamentals and just like try to quip. And it was such a like a kind of time bomb or trap for myself because it was like I started studying the canonization process and I was like, whoa, the Bible just didn't drop out of the sky. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, yeah. it was one, like, how could I have not thought about this? It was like, mm-hmm. I just took for granted certain things. You see what I'm saying? And so I'm trying to be charitable mm-hmm. here. It's like, people don't realize they just take for granted. They have certain presuppositions. We all do. But then there comes this place where like that presupposition gets challenged and like, what are you going to do? So to kind of bring it back forward, it's like the presupposition. And I realized this a couple of weeks ago, I was like, you know, my presupposition is just that um, just like we're having this conversation, like we're all we're we are kind of like out of the loop, like independent, you know, post libertarian all that stuff. And just, you know, kind of see through the binary. But mm-hmm. the thing I realized is, especially over the last few months, it's like, oh, there's a lot of people who they're still in that matrix of like they mm-hmm. believe the binary yeah. is the thing. And they think that the binary, like we've talked a lot about the like Hegelian dialectic. And I think a lot of people, mm-hmm. especially people who are like came, like took umbrage with us thinking that we had like Trump derangement syndrome or something. I think that these people they really are, are they, they still like, they don't know what that is. They don't know about synthesis mm-hmm. and they don't, 
understand mm-hmm. about being outside of that, that that binary lens is part of an intentional. Oh, it's a spell. A spell. It's a spell. It's a, it's a spell. spell. They're getting back to it. Right. So like it's, yeah. it's part of a spell. And so that was, that was something I kind of came back to again. I'm like, yeah. And I, and I think, and again, like, duh, whatever, but you have these moments where, you know, you're just so used to something you realize, oh, okay. Okay. That's right. And I think that's the thing is like the spell of, you know, the binary and then also to black hat, white hat. Don't you want to vote for the white hat? Of course. Why would you want to vote for the black hat? You know what I mean? Like all of these things and they, they start coming to fruition. And, and again, the hope would always be that, okay, well, when we understand that historically, like the spirit of the church has always been above that and, and mm-hmm. has always sought to not give the pinch of incense and not, you know what I mean? It's like, there's a way to be a good citizen, right? And there's a way to be a quote unquote patriot. Cause there's, you know, there's fathers talk about being a patriot, but that, but that patriotism never is about the kind of throwing in partisanship, your partisanship. Patriot, oh, Father, this it's so interesting because it, it's crazy that this ties into exactly what you were talking about with music and with music and identity and being able to appreciate. So it's like, and this is the same thing that that uh, that I've been seeing. I I follow politics. I'm involved in local politics here. You know what I mean? I've drafted legislation. I've helped out. I mean, I'm 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 going to have lunch tomorrow with someone who was just elected and I helped him with his strategy on his campaign, all of these things. Now, mind you, I don't vote here. I don't vote. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. But I follow, so I can't mm-hmm. be partisan. I don't even vote, right? And I don't donate to anybody. But do I follow politics? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Why? Because it matters. I have children. Mm-hmm. These are going to be the people mm-hmm. who are the leaders. If I can have some influence in a good way on somebody mm-hmm. and they're asking for my help, mm-hmm. uh, you know, at, at, to make them better, okay, yes, I'll participate. But Engaging in a, a, a fascination, right? A fascination, which, by the way, you know, fascinare means to cast a spell on in Latin. That's literally what it means, right? So if you're fascinated, that means you've, been, you've had a spell cast on you. And what are people? They're fascinated with Trump, mm-hmm. either positively or negatively. And the thing is, like, if you find yourself fascinated with Trump, if you find yourself fascinated with anybody or anything like you've already had a spell cast on you and you're inside of it, you're in, you're now you're inside. You, if you, of course, how could you, you can't not pay attention to Trump. Everybody in the world has to pay attention to Trump. So well, there's a the difference been... between that and then making either the pro Trump or anti Trump part of your identity. There's a huge difference. There's a huge difference. So, I'm throwing this. I'm throwing this to you guys right now. Shout out to um, my man Germanus. Um, I want you guys, if we can, um, put this up because okay. it's really good. Okay. Um, yeah. And it may be whatever. You know what I mean. And and I know it's like you know don't ever trust like the devil. You, whatever. Wait, did you send it into the chat? Yeah, I'm putting it in right now. Okay. Um, okay. But but the thing that I, I want to say is, like, really good about this is, like, you know, I don't want to use the word sophistication because for a lot of times for us, we, you know, kind of, like, we'll use that in a negative connotation. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, like, there's a, just a measure of sophistication or, like, let's not say the specific, that's not the word. There's a measure of discernment, which is kind of, like, shocking that people don't want to have. And it's because it, it, oh, it, yes, I see. Okay. Yeah. Now, take in mind the source. Now, take in mind uh-huh. the source, right? Um, I mean, this is the, this is, uh, this is what's Marina. her name? The, uh, Marina Abramovich, right? Yeah. She's, she's a witch of witches for sure. Yeah. Yep. Yep. For sure. Yep. I, it's, I'm glad, uh, Father, I'm so, I've been trying to tell people this. I've been trying to tell people that you don't understand that group that you thought was beaten by this was the most empowered of anyone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You thought that you thought this beat them. You don't understand mm-hmm. what's actually taking place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you don't you don't understand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> who is more empo- who is more empowered by Batman still being around <laughs> than the Joker. than the villains? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And vice versa, and vice versa. Uh, 
Okay, hold on. Let me. I'm going to have to. Uh, plenty of can canonical stories to disagree with you. What? But <laughs> plenty of canonical stories that would. There's a whole. <laughs> there's a whole arc that Chips oh, yeah. run where I mean never existed. <laughs> of course, and of the course. villain still showed up anyway. It it all goes back to the the wanes and the occult magic that happened around. Know, well, God, well I just want to say but they're, but they're not but they're but they're not again like the, their purpose and their meaning I'm not saying that they're not going to be there these things are going to be there yeah. right but it's like the Dodgers not having anybody to play so you bring in the San Francisco Giants like, and then you're like oh there's a rivalry and you're like no that's not that's an invented rivalry right right <laughs> they brought them in to play them right right and like and let me just I mean, um, let me just throw a couple things out, just 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 for people to consider, right? Because I, I know this thing, and, I, and I'm I'm sure for some of our brothers in the church, it's kind of like they they don't like this narrative of the things I'm about to say because it's uncomfortable, right? But like, um, mm -hmm. so first of all, right, just just a couple things to consider. I'm gonna butcher the term, but it's the wrestling term, K K Fab. Uh, there's a term kayfabe 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 thank you kayfabe and it's like what, what is that right well in professional wrestling right it's the whole setup of having you know the good guy the bad guy you know what i mean and you get that for emotional investment okay now i almost want to put a pin in it and have a whole other conversation about emotions right because that's a whole wait father father before you before you go for forward you talked about kayfabe you talked about wrestling who is the co-chair of Trump's transition team? Linda McMahon. Vince no McMahon's way, wife really? And the former C yeah, she's the co-chair. Wow, that's too good. The literal CEO of WWE that's too is the co-chair of Trump's transition team. So well, people listen, are like, it's not, it's not kayfabe, Father Turbo. No, and you're like, uh... No, you're, no, you're, you're, you know, you know, you're just, that's too much. That's just a coincidence. Uh, that's just it's a just a coincidence. Total coincidence. That's just total a coincidence. coincidence. That's just that's just a coincidence. Listen, she's just qualified. And listen, he just, just wants qualified. to have yeah. he just wants to have more women. That's his way of, of of approaching DEI. He wants to have more qualified women in his cabinet. Okay. So, anyways, so like <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing I was gonna say, and this is the more important thing, right? What Chris like a Christian means that you're a little Christ, which means you're a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And so you're a follower of him. And so the thing is, is like, and this is the great contribution of Rene Girard, right? Is that Christ, just on the level of being the, a great teacher, like, of course, he's God. Of course, of course. I'm not, I'm not trying to insert that dichotomy, right? But in that respect of sociologically speaking, philosophically speaking, he shows the way out of these cycles, Right. He shows the way out of these cycles and, and his his very his very existence and, and, and way of being right reveals that not only is it possible, but the only way to eternal life is to escape these systems of the binary of like your your worldly yeah. understanding of what is good and what is evil. Like, that's the whole thing. You know, what's so funny to me. I think about the ortho bro guy who's going to like talk to somebody and puts, put down some, put down some Catholic guy, put down some prostitute and say like, we're apophatic, we're apophatic. And our theology is apophatic and just use it as a, as like a, a cudgel to beat someone. But at the same time, they won't apply it in this area and they want to apply the right. reality of trying to move outside of something beyond your ability to say, this is good. This is bad. Right. Like, no, you have to choose something. It's like, no, why? Christ didn't have to choose anything. That was the biggest argument I heard was, well, we have, it's, it's the, yeah, he may not be a real Christian, blah, 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 but he's got the right, getting us in the right direction. It's got to be one of them. Might as well be this guy. And I think Father Peter Hears actually did a video not too long ago. We talked about the devil always presents two choices. Mm -hmm. That binary, that right there. Feels like it's got to be one of these two things, then you know, because it's like the I don't know how I get my kids. Well, 
there's this really, really cool, like, car you could have over here, or this boring, like, you know, whatever, whatever. It's like, you got these two choices. It's like, well, obviously, I want this car thing. And I mean, that's, like, it's the more exciting, the more, like, I was for change option. You know? Because, I mean, like, you'll never be able to convince me to some degree that the whole thing, again, was, you know, come back to, like, okay, so... The Biden election was rigged, but this one's not. Like, I don't really get how that works because everything just seems like so steered towards just even the deflation. Well, the thing is, well, like campaign well, it's, over the but, last it's, but it's but it's rigged. But there's it's two people out of three hundred and thirty million. But that, the, and so, and they're and they're pre and they're pre chosen. They're yeah. I mean they're people whose names you know. Of it's it's rigged from way. I mean the whole. But thing. That's here, here, here's the thing though. Here's, let me just throw this out. Here's the thing, because there's two sides of it, right? There's there's the side of oh that was rigged from within the deep state, quote unquote. Right. 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 But no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking but, Ephesians six twelve. Exactly. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> but, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But what's funny is, what's funny is we can almost like take Ephesians 6, 12 off the table, which is what's crazy yeah. Is, yeah. is that people do it. People have totally taken it off the table. <laughs> like they didn't, they think it doesn't apply, but let me just, uh-huh. let me just, let me just kind of rest a little bit in the kind of the, in the bosom of conspiracy theory, <laughs> tinfoil, right? Go ahead. The manipulation, this is going back to the kayfabe thing, like the manipulation yeah. of the people's emotions. Like no one ever thinks about like, again, what's we can use the term quote unquote psyop, but the problem with that is it gets a little too, um, it, it, it's a little too sniper-ish for, it, it's too in the realm of like um, precise, I think for people to accept. But I'm just going to say the the manipulation of the people's emotions, right? Mm-hmm. Listen, this is the whole thing. This is the synthesis, right? You get you. Just forgive me. Just please be patient with me. I've been watching how I like you know like I got I got my own things like black conservatives, you know, conservatives over here, mm-hmm. libertarians, independents, like all this stuff, right? I have my kind of Osmandis thing set up and like i just kind of look at all this stuff right and the thing that's interesting is still to this day it's kind of like the outrage is what is keeping people it's no longer the outrage of like look what they're doing now it's the outrage over like yeah and like look at them falling apart just follow me on this right but lefty's losing it lefty's losing losing right yeah but here's here's the thing right while all of that is still the kind of indulging of that um, of that emotional yes. yes potion you see what i'm saying the fascination it, it, the fascination and the spell of it and it's just like it's love potion number nine and it's just mm-hmm. people are just kind of like drinking it in and no one ever thinks no one ever considers that that's at play no one ever considers like because this is what i'm trying to get at one of the things that you like everyone said it and everyone felt it and, and i think that was one of the things that kind of bothered people about our project was we weren't spending a bunch of time outraged at the transgenders and we, you're, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but look what they're doing. It's like, that's so obvious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's so obvious. And the thing is, is like that outrage at like, ah, oh, like, look what they're doing. That very thing is what got people to like, give me what you got. Yeah. Yeah. Give me what you got because I'm so I'm just tired and I'm sick of the wokes. And like, yeah, the mm-hmm. wokes are terrible for sure. But the thing is, is like, man, like that's the worm on the hook. Play the play the clip. Play the clip. This is this okay. is yeah, this yeah, yeah. Because yeah. she's she's of course I'm so glad. I'm so glad that this clip came out. I'm Shout so out glad to because I've been trying to trying to tell people this. Okay, here we go. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on, I need to do it the right way so that we actually get some audio. Okay, here we go. It's the best thing happened ever to us. Huh? That he is the magician of the highest order. That he is there in his irrational mind to create confusion in order that the human being can find new order. And you know it's not so stupid. 
thinking about this in that way. It's completely turning things upside down. That's it. What's crazy to me, and and I think this is the thing, it's like, just to get real, real talk, we can almost, you know, I almost want to kind of move on from there because it's going to get real serious. But I just, it's shocking to me because um, just people, people are so ignorant of the wiles of the devil. And I don't know what they think. And, and it, and it, it's kind of getting back to, we talked weeks ago about that Eric Weinstein video where he's like, Hey, like you think they're that stupid. Um, right. It's just, it's shocking to me that, and it, and it is, it's this thing of like the calling of the herd, whatever, but people just, um, everyone, it's easy to look down and be like, Oh, like, I can't believe they fell for that. But then like, you know, what are you falling for? And, and here's the thing is, are you bearing the cross? Because like, for me, this, this is, this is my tension. Like, I never thought about it, but like, I'm so glad you said it. I'm like, yeah, I hope some people unsubscribe or whatever. I wouldn't care. And I'm just saying that because to me, no, really, because to me, like, I need to have that because yeah. that's where it's like, okay, that that's the sign you're I'm like, that's the sign you're over the, the target. Not you're getting dull. Flag. That's yeah, the sign the, the knife target, isn't yeah. getting dull. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Because here, here's the thing is, I don't, I don't hear too many people talking. Like, I really don't, I don't hear too many whatever YouTube stuff, whatever. I, not that I'm like looking for it, but like who, who's really talking about like, Hey, like you should be really living your life in such a way where like, like the world don't like you. You know what I mean? Like this, our tradition is not a, a cooler, more uh, manly way of like self-help and like to have a bigger, better, sexier, faster, stronger life. I Like that whole message it's like a, it's a, it's like a, it's like a different kind of prosperity gospel that people are promoting. Mm -hmm. Like people are, people are starting to get into this idea about orthodoxy is about like a, a, a weird kind of moralistic prosperity gospel. And just where is the reality of like, are you, are you ready to genuinely suffer? Like, are you ready? Well, father, it's father. The, here's the, I, I think the interesting part about it is like, this was a, this was a great, you know, we had talked about like tests. This was a great test, I think for Orthodox people and particularly the ones that I mentioned before. And it's going to be interesting to see, because here's the thing, uh, this new guy in charge doesn't like you any more than uh, the old people in charge. As a matter of fact, the old people in charge are probably actually more, when it comes to you, religiously tolerant. Because here's the thing. Those people allowed protests against Israel to take place. Mm -hmm. The guy in charge mm -hmm. said he's going to lock up everybody who protests against Israel. But, but you, know who is the, you know who's against the state of Israel? Mm -hmm. Like, de facto? Mm -hmm. The Orthodox Church. Mm-hmm. We are the de facto enemy de facto. of the state of Israel. De facto, de facto. Because we, our existence is proof of their illegitimacy, mm -hmm. of the illegitimacy yes. of their yep. claims. Yep. And so Man. if you think that this guy, the other guy, allowed protests to take place you need to close against your that group. <laughs> this, this guy said he's going to arrest anybody. So you thought, see, you thought, you thought that this guy was on your side, but that's because you forgot what it meant to be orthodox or never, right. maybe you didn't, you never right. knew. Well, well, the thing is, again, bread and circuses. You didn't think you wanted bread and yep. circuses, but you really yeah. did. Yeah. You really did want bread and circuses. Like yeah. people forget. And, it, and again, it's, it's, it's that thing where it's like, People forget, um, like the other day on yesterday. In fact, you know, I'm just saying, Andrew could say differently. I'm I'm probably in my head about it, my own vanity, my own sin. But like, I started bringing it up in the homily yesterday, uh, yesterday about twenty and talking about disease a little bit. You know what I mean? And like, I don't know if it was just yeah. me or whatever. I'm a human being. I'm a sinful man. Everybody knows that. No, no big surprise. But. I was like, ah, you know, I bet there's some people who are kind of like, you know what I mean? I could just feel a little bit of the squirm in there. 
because like, man, just let it go. Father, just let it go. You know what I mean? Um, and like, it's, it's so funny because not that this, I, I'm just bringing this up anecdotally to kind of prove a point. Somebody earlier in the year, it might have been Andrew, honestly. I don't know who it was. But someone had the bright idea of looking to see what people say about me online, whatever. And they, <laughs> they sent me this thing. Don't do that. It was great. And they, so they sent me, it was, it was great. People say nice things, whatever. You know what I mean? Um, woe unto you when people say, speak well of you. So woe unto me. Um, but the but the thing that was interesting was you know the, there was this one comment like yeah, he kind of went hard in the paint over over the the COVID thing you know so, yeah 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 you know and I was like yeah I'm still on that I, and I'm just I'm I'm still on that and I'm gonna tell you why I'm still on it right you have to be you're a priest there's been no <laughs> repentance like I am still on that and like that's another litmus for me is like are you gonna forget. Are you are you gonna forget? Are you gonna are you really gonna forget? Because see, for me, the thing is, um, I'm grateful. We've talked about this. It's like, oh man, it was like the best thing that happened to anybody, right? The best thing. And so it's like, how are you seeing these things now? Are you seeing them in the in the lens of repentance and embracing the cross and seeing like the inversion that the world gave you and now you're reverting the thing, you know, for the sake of like true spiritual life. Right. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Right. And, and that's my whole thing. It's like, I don't, you know, like don't talk to me about Athenite spirituality. Don't talk to me about this and this and that. If you're not really looking at things and being like, yeah, like the spirit of this age. And you know, and here's another thing. I just want to say this. I always throw this out to people. Don't ever come to me and don't talk to me about like, well, you're talking about secular music and you got tattoos. It's like, man, if that's the least of your problems, you're just proving my point. You've, you've never suffered in your life. You know nothing about pain, Jon Snow. You know what I mean? So I think that's the big thing here is like, what do we like? Have we adopted a truly otherworldly position on what is going down? Right. It's like, don't talk to me about Blessed Sarah from Rose if you're not down with like what the real apocalypse is like, because it isn't, you know, like, I don't know what you're looking for, but, you know, it really is about deceit and it really is about subtlety and it really is about you. It's not what you think it is. And so that's the edge that we should always be keeping. I mean, that's why. Paul's talking about like, hey, offering prayers for for the emperor. You know what I mean? It's like he wasn't praying for like some godly emperor. Like that's that's an yes. edge. That's keeping that's that martyric edge, right? So, and so well, speaking of, speaking of uh, uh, martyrs, forgive me, Father. This is this is a question that came up that I wanted to get your thoughts on because I think it's directly relevant. Can can a non orthodox king? a non-Orthodox leader, does that person even have the capacity to bring Orthodox people closer to Christ except as a catalyst for their martyrdom? If we're understanding martyrdom, not just exclusively in like the actual loss of biological life. Right, but just to witness, to bear witness. But to bear witness... Anything else is seduction. Right. Show me where it's not. Exactly. Show me where it's not. And the thing is, I think that I think that this is the key, Father, because that's the the, that's it's the big trap. It's a it's a Sergianism. Mm -hmm. Which, speaking of Father Seraphim Rose, yeah. It was yeah. his writing that introduced yeah. me to Sergius. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he wrote yeah. again about it. Like you want to talk about Father Sarah, yeah. Sarah from Rose, and it's like, are you not a Sergian? Yeah. What you're doing right now, yeah. like a uh, yeah. guy yeah. who's out there with the the Trump meme of him sitting on a thro- a Roman throne with, and you've got the Orthodox cross in your uh, yeah. in your avatar or whatever. Get yeah. get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What? Blessed Sarah coming up a lot recently. I think like. Uh, like organically, I think there's been some stuff that he said that's resonating a little bit harder now. But I want to ask real quick that, like, 
So, yeah, we're, we're, we, if, basically, if you haven't heard us by now, you're not going to hear. Like, there's nothing we can really say at this point. Maybe, maybe there's still some people out there. I mean, I'm all for that's nothing else. I'm all for it. I'm, I'm down for that. But at this point, like, I don't know how much more obvious we can point out that, like, what he is bringing to the table is not Christ, but it's his idealism. It's a set of ideals. It's a set of whatever, whatever, whatever. It's this whole idea of, like, well, we can return to where we were, yada, 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 Christian nation, blah, blah, blah. All this kind of stuff is just said, you know, kind of under the breath a little bit, like, you know, oh, yeah, we'll be Christian. But don't worry about it. It'll be fine. But then, by the way, literally said that. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. I'll take care of it. You'll never need to vote again. Never You'll never need, need to, to vote. vote again, Christians. So, is is there anything about this father that you think is redemptive? Is there anything about like his attitudes, like you know, about Trump? Is there something that we can say that maybe? Listen, listen, like, listen, listen, listen. Uh, thank you so much, Andrew. I, man, that's a great softball. Like, I want to just flip it real quick. You know what I mean? I was on the debate team in school, <laughs> right? I'll argue whatever side you want, right? Um, and that's kind of getting to the point, which is like for all the people who tuned out, whatever, and they said, oh, I'll come back after the election, whatever. Like, I'm glad you're back, Jimmy. So here's the thing. The Trump derangement syndrome, you know, the reason why it's kind of like, why it seems like we're railed in on it is because number one, Let's just walking everybody through it like this kind of like is the uh, footnote cheat sheet for everybody to kind of like cipher. Right. There's no point in talking about wokes because it's so obvious why we're going to have a 15 minute conversation about why we need oxygen. OK, terrible. Right. Um, and yeah, that's great. OK, we pray for peaceful existence and all that stuff. We're like, yeah. There's a there's a measure of civic peace in regards of like conventional, quote unquote, conservative morality that that will seemingly be brought. Great. OK, but let me just kind of give a little side addendum to that, which is and when they say peace, peace. <laughs> right. That's the problem. I'm not looking for Mad Max. See, I, and this is why I've always maintained. I've always maintained this like all these people freaking out, whatever. It's like you fool. Raka, forgive me. Like, I shouldn't say that, but don't look for the end of the world coming through like the wokes and like, like whatever. It's like, yeah, me, not my kids not being able to go to the library has been great. It's, it's been terrible, but it's been great. You know what I'm saying? That's like a big thing, right? So, like, because in peace, peace, that's when the sudden destruction comes. Do you not know the scriptures? Do you not know the history? You see what I'm saying? Like, so that's why all this comes up because it's like, okay, all the stuff that you're saying, it's like people are like, yeah, but you know, he's going to put down the wokes. He's like, and you know, gonna like that great thing. It's like, you know, calling out, like going to stop all the transgender stuff. And like, okay, that's great. I, it's not that I want that to happen. Right. What this is about is people of God, right. If he's your King Christ, then he should be your King. Right. People of God, you need to have attention. If you're here and your eyes are, are awake now, if you're one of those people that came into the church because the last four years and, you know, like you're like Naomi Wolf, right? And your eyes were open to the, you know, the palpable evil that came into the world. Okay. If that's you, right? Well, why are you going to sleep now? Why are you, why are you choosing to go to sleep now? Because this is a... This is a better flavor because of, because he no because he fixed it, Father. It's a better oh, see, flavor. I, of I thought I, it's, I it's, actually, it's it's cipher from the Matrix, Father. They got yeah. they they got the red pill. They got into mm. and then they're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is actually like I have to lose. This is actually mm. hard. No, give me the steak. Give me the steak. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care that it's fake. I know this is fake. I know that this is ones and zeros, but it tastes like steak and I don't care. Yep. Bring and then the harp. That's it. That's it. <laughs> but even then, like you take it on the micro, that's the macro. 
Yeah. I mean, what happens when you endure like a temptation, you come out the yeah. other side, yeah. the, the, immediately the first instinct is to jump right into pride. Because the thing oh, you would 100%. Love the right I mean, I mean, I just want to say this because like, look, uh, just my motivations straight out again, um, it's just a ministry. It's a platform. And like, I'm all about, I want the people of God to be the people of God because I want my master to receive all the fruits of his suffering. And the thing is, is like that edge, which people are losing, right? Like the edge is what wins people to Christ. What's you, you're not going to win people to a, <laughs> we're going to win them to, to like being a Baptist with cassocks being a Baptist with icons, is that what you're going to win people to? What spirituality are you winning them to? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. And, and, and that's kind of my whole point is like, you know, I'm just saying that's the big thing is, you know, who, man, digging deeper, because if you don't have, if you're not looking to embrace the cross, then what are you doing? And anyone who would leak, who yeah. would look to like, and look, here's the thing. All that aside, I'll get off that because people don't want to hear about the cross. They don't want to hear about the teachings of Christ. That's fine. Let's just talk about this then. Um, you know, abortion again, Israel. Like, mm-hmm. let's look at some real like like if if there's some hardcore non-compromising on things that really matter to us like spiritually and theologically, let's talk, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But Does this man hold, forgive me, Father, does this man hold any of the values that you hold? Really? When you stand outside Orthodox people, this is what, and the other thing is, Father, I think some people would be here and they think because of the medium of YouTube, we're here, we're here trying to critique, we're here trying to judge. I'm really not. I'm here sitting like I'm talking to somebody friends who I have who are are addicts who are in the throes of something and I'm trying to have an intervention with them because I love them and I want to bring them out. And it's like, stand outside of this. Does this man actually share any of the values that you have Orthodox person that you hold to be valued? Yeah. I mean, for me as a priest, I'm just like, look, I'm, I have a, like you have, you have no vision. You have to have a long-term, you have to have a long game view of these things. And that long game, that doesn't, forgive me, I'm probably using the wrong, I shouldn't use that term, because to me, long long term, the long game doesn't just mean forward, it means remembering back, Deuteronomy, yes, with the remembrance. Yes. See, it, it, it's, it's, it's zooming out and having the whole picture. And again, it's crazy how many people have forgotten Operation Warp Speed. No, right? The, like, look, the RFK wrote a book called The Real Anthony Fauci. Who put Anthony Fauci in charge? Who was the man who put Anthony Fauci in charge? It, it, it's it's like it's, it's a coincidence. Crazy. He didn't know. It's no, crazy. No, he crazy. didn't know. He didn't know, and he oh, was just. Well, here's looking. the thing: if he didn't know, then he's not qualified to be no. president. No, 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 no. Everyone can make mistakes, right? But this time he's going to get it right, and this time he's going to get it right, and this time he's going to. He's going to bring in the things that, that really need – this time the swamp really is going to get drained. You know, Elon Musk, like- Elon Musk, don't you just <laughs> – when you look at him, when you say his name, I just want to spit like when we Evil. renounce the devil. Evil. It's just Evil. like – Evil. It's like, and it's, it's just so funny because this is, this is the whole thing for me. It's like, okay, look, guys, okay. Full disclosure, I know I got some people mock me, whatever. I'm like that guy, you know, okay, whatever. Goth guy, closet goth guy, whatever. Like, I just want everyone to be really clear. People do not, people do, but they don't. People don't realize how much evil they're swimming in, but they don't know what it is. They're all these people, Orthodox Christians, they're looking for, you know, bridge raver guy wearing a pentagram. Mm-hmm. And like doing yep. whatever, it's like, yep. trust me, man. N- how about this? Eighty percent of the time, I'll give you a fat twenty, right? Eighty percent of the time, that is not what we're talking about. When we talk about Ephesians six twelve, when we talk about evil. I'll give you twenty. I'll give you a fat twenty, maybe twenty percent. I'll talk about the overt, you know, hot topic, whatever, pentagram, whatever. Eighty percent of the time. 
I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the evil that you're just sipping on like it's pina coladas. And and that evil But but I, Father Grimes does look like that though. Like that bridge raver that you described with the yeah, 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 yeah. But people Grimes, don't know who Grimes, Grimes is. People don't know who Grimes is. And like just let's just throw this out there, right? So that's the thing. Okay, because that's another thing. People are like you guys drop all this because stuff. because he he has a he has a child with a woman who looks exactly like okay, that, listen, who's not even named a human name. <laughs> I know, I know, and like there's a lot of people who don't know. So I'm just gonna say this, right? So like to get everyone on on board. So people, Elon Musk had a child with a quote unquote musician artist. It's really she's just quote a sorcerer, unquote. just a sorcerer yeah. named Grimes, right? And Grimes mm-hmm. does audio spells and all this great stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Just over, like overtly, overt, overtly demonic, right? And had a child and did not even give it a human name, but gave it some mm-hmm. demonic language name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And and this is and this is the like, oh yeah, you know, he's like, this is another thing. You really think he cares about your freedom? What do you think X is? Like people are just like, don't you know X is just harvesting your data? Like you already well, he admits are the, it. You already are like all these people. It's like I got some good people. Like whatever. It's like they all oh, look what I got. I got on this beef, ortho beef on X. I'm like, you are just. I want to like just like I'm gonna do this from now on. Next time someone sends me like, oh look at this ortho beef I got into on X. I'm gonna have just like a picture of you know, the human cell thing from the matrix, like, yeah. you know, the human battery. It's like, don't you know, that's what you are. You're just a human, but you're just, it's just the data though. It's like father, father, I would advise everybody because people are looking at this and they want to argue. And I'm like, look, don't argue. Here's all you need to do. It's very easy. Go and pull up, do it for yourself. Don't listen to us, but you've forgotten. Like you said, they can't even go back three years, go and pull up the First time Elon Musk came on Joe Rogan, where the famous smoking weed and then he, the stock went down and he's drinking alcohol and they open up with him talking about AI and he's very somber. And he says that AI, he, he's like, I tried to tell him, I tried to tell him all AI is going to destroy us all. It's the demon. It's going to destroy everybody. And then go listen to his most recent one that was just like two weeks ago or right before the election, where he's talking all about how wonderful Grok is. And he and Joe Rogan go and play with the AI on the show that's on Twitter. And I'm like, yo, people, what do you need? What do you need? He's literally telling you. (laughs) No, that's just you're making too much out of it, (laughs) Sabrina. This is, this it's is like, yo, he's telling you, man. No, 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 no. You're just, you know, you're, ugh, you're not charitable. You know, you're just a black pill. That's that's the problem. Uh, that's you what know, they tell me. Does anybody know who Yuval Harari is? Yeah. Oh man, he's the worst. Of course, Sapien. of course. I, look, look, we're playing a game now at this point, right? We're just, we're just, we're playing that game. But it's like, I'm just, I'm just yeah. being that guy. It's like, I'm just gonna put names. I'm like, oh, whatever. Like Yuval Harari. Like, like, there's just so much. And and the fact that you don't need to know all the see this is the big thing you don't need yeah, you to don't. know all the names no. that that's kind of yeah. my point the the point of just like dropping these names I'm like look what I know look what you don't know peon that's not what I'm doing what I'm trying to do is like we need to we okay because I I'm not I don't want to be the guy who beats the sheep and feeds the goats okay here's the thing like fair enough I I want people who are listening to be like okay sober up right. It's not about being like anti-Trump for the sake of being anti-Trump. Because it's not anti-Trump. No. To be anti-Trump. I'm like system. I'm anti the beast. Let's just even make it more clear. I'm Father, Father I'm not even anti-Trump. No, like of course on the, not. That's on what I'm trying to scale, say. On the scale of people that are bad. But it's I, like by the same token, I'm not I'm not anti the dude who's like down tonight at uh at the beach at happy hour having a bunch of drinks with his bros and stumbling home drunk. I'm not against him either, but I'm not hanging out with him. Well, even more importantly, right? I'm not staking my, I'm not staking the exactly. most important things exactly. that matter on him. Exactly. That, that's like, it's just so crazy because it's so funny. Cause like Charlie, whatever that guy's name is like, you guys are the ones who are looking for an earthly King. That guy, I hope he listens. I love you, Charlie. Give me more of that. Like, 
this is this is the funny thing to me is like this is all about like like don't put your trust in princes and sons of men and sons and take men. it literally that's all we're saying because it's supposed to be taken literally is it not it's Father? supposed to be taken literally <laughs> right and it, and it's just kind of like when i was a child i spoke like a child i reasoned yeah. like a child but when it became a man i put away childish things and so listen for all the talk of like manosphere and like or the ortho men lift weights and which is great lift weights shoot guns sure why not all that but like it doesn't matter if you lift weights and shoot guns if you're if your mind and your heart more importantly is like enslaved still like who cares you know what i'm saying like like let's not get it twisted right christian like don't make orthodoxy a kind of like stoicism in cassocks stoicism with icons you know what i'm saying mm. like all the all this talk about all the synthesis and trying to bring in all these different philosophies like all that stuff is rubbish man follower of christ follower of the tradition right like what does the tradition tell us about our state in the world it's like yeah you know if, if you if you realize that you've been drunk okay look great we've all had those rough nights the difference is, right, I'm not I'm not giving you a hard time for having a rough night or a rough month or a rough season. You went on a we went on a bender. But when you wake up, the question is, and everyone knows this, there's that one morning when you wake up and then you decided, I can't do that again. And you really meant it. Yep. That's yep. what I'm saying. And so just to make it clear, because some people they needed to be spelled out for them, the bender in this context, right? In this analogy is being drunk on you're going to have some sort of like world, some safer world. Everything's going to be okay. You can spend more again. You're going to be able to just buy whatever you want, whenever you want. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be hassled by those dreadful wokey people. You're going to not going to have to deal with those BLM people, all that stuff. It's like, if that's what your whole bar of what you're, and that's what a lot of Orthodox people's bar is. Their bar is they want a nice, safe, clean, political they want a nice, safe, clean neighborhood to live in, quote unquote. Yep. They're not worried. But that's about not even fair to Donald Trump, father. Forgive me. Like, as you say that, the craziest thing about it is you're actually setting that man up for failure, just like he did the last time. Because the thing is, he can't deliver that. He hey, can't deliver that. But he's speaking. such a narcissist that if enough people put that kind of faith in him, he's going to think he can deliver that. And that's the worst thing because he can't. He can See, the thing him. is, I just want to say this because, like, here's the thing. So what should we be doing, Father? I just, you talked for, like, 45 years about, like, what we're not supposed to do. <laughs> what are we supposed to do? Okay. Well, here's what you're supposed to do, right? What what should our orientation be as with our Christians, in my humble opinion, right? Well, in my humble opinion, what it is, what it is is, if we really focus, and here's the thing, don't roll your eyes, right? If we really focus on our personal repentance, and that doesn't mean just as an individual. I mean, person as in humans, right? That means your family, your parish community, your broader Orthodox community. It's like, man, I don't even need to worry about Israel or Ukraine. It's like, there's like five Orthodox churches in Kansas City. We don't all get along. Like, I got to worry about that. You know what I'm saying? There's there's things that you got to worry about on that lo on that local level that, like, if you begin to actually put the investment in in regards of, like, forgiveness, love, wisdom, discernment, like, all that stuff, then what happens is it clears out all the baggage and you're able to maybe have clear insight on the trajectory because here's the thing man the train's going and i think that's the thing that people don't understand is like the best that we hope for is that there's a pause it's the same thing with nineveh yeah. the ninevites repented and it gave them a season 50 years or whatever but eventually the judgment came yeah and and i think that's the thing is like i'm glad I'm, like you know how i'm looking at it um, this is this is my quote me on it i'm like well I'm not holding my breath, but I'm ready to build. I mean, I've already been yeah. building, right? I'm already been building. It's like, cool. If we're going to have a season of like civic peace, let's yeah. say, then here's the thing. Get busy. Agreed. If you're, if, if we are in the season of civic peace that all the people who are just like, they think that, you know, 
the emperors come in, then don't go to sleep. Prepare for war. Yep. Build your stinking ark. And that's then that's kind of the thing I'm trying to get at is you can't really build the ark if you think everything's okay. So do, you, do you see what I'm saying? That's the thing is you can't be building the ark. You can't be preparing if you think, oh, why am I doing this? Everything's fine now. Blue Everything, skies forever, Father. Blue skies, skies forever. forever. Hey. It's like full. God's just, if any, it, the best that we have is God's given us a little bit of time to to build Right. And what, what do you mean by build? OK, what do you mean, Father? OK, like, there's what I mean. Build your fam. First of all, build your prayer. Like, I'll just make it real simple for people. I'm going to give the, the priest PSA. Right. Build your prayer life. And I mean that literally. Right. It can't be autonomous. Don't just be making it up on your own. Talk to your Godfather. Talk to your talk to your spiritual father. Build a prayer life and, and be about it. Right. Be about it. It's not about being perfect. It's about being faithful. OK. Timestamp that. Now, the next thing is build your family. Right. With wife, kids, husband, kids, um, single brothers in a house, sisters living together, like build your family. Right. Build those connections strong. Get to know your neighbors. I'm just I'm just walking everybody through because like, like it's not I'm not we're not sitting here just kind of like, oh, critiquing, whatever. Right. Build your na- build your build yourself build your family build your neighbors get to know your neighbors for better or for worse cuz listen i'm all about knowing who's not on my side i'd rather know who's not on my side than who's on my side right like when i go to the locker room at the ymca i change with my back to the wall <laughs> you know what i mean and i and like that's just one of those things it's like who who's just kind of whatever like i'm just saying okay so that's another thing you got to build your you got to build your who are your neighbors right What's going on in your parish, right? right? Like, I don't like this and that. Okay, well, what are you doing about it, right? Like, how are you within their parish committee? How are you, okay, in the broader world? Do you know the surrounding priests? Like, I'm just, I'm being super pedantic here because people complain about whatever. So like, here, I can be pedantic. I can give you things to do. This is what it means to build. Okay, so once you've done that, because here's the thing, once you've done that, then you can start building institutions. And a lot of people, they want to build institutions before any of that. I know people, but they want to talk to me about like, talk to this politician and do this and do that. And I look at them, I'm like, your family's a mess. You're a mess. Don't talk to me about talking to Senator so-and-so or I should do this or that. Don't talk to me. Like, you go handle that first, right? Because you can't build an institution until your institutions are built by strong souls, period. Mm -hmm. Because God, God uses strong souls. Okay, what am I talking about? I'm not talking about the like, I, you know, eat my beef, lift my weights. That's great. I'm all about lifting weights. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying when I mean strong souls, I mean, people who have been embracing the splinter in their side that God's given them. That's the measure of a strong soul. Because that's the soul that lives for the sake of Christ. And that institution isn't going to be about their ego. See the cat who's all about it, who's insecure, who lifts not to be strong and to do work, but lifts because like he's short and he's like insecure to sort like all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That guy, he's not building anything that's going to last because it's all contingent upon. It's all about like, I'm building something out of my insecurity. You build. Also, by the way, father, it literally looks different. That person, you could tell the difference between somebody who who trains for strength and somebody who's training for vanity because their body looks totally different even. Yeah. So, and I mean, who am I? I'm a cripple. I got a bum leg. (laughs) You know what I mean? I'm in pain all the time, whatever. But my point is that pain all the time, again, that's my strength. Like, it's like, I'm, I'm like, man, like even today walking in the car, I'm like, man, praise God. It's like. Like I've hit this week, this last couple weeks, I'm like, okay, I'm like in that acceptance mode, kind of like an amputee. You know what I mean? It's like I've recovered, like, okay, but it's like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to be like this forever. Mm. You know what I mean? I may, I may have a little bit, you know what I mean? I go to the gym, I do all that, but I'm going there for functionality, for mobility, but yep. it's like, yep. I, I have, I'm in the season of accepting I'm like, handicapped to some degree now like i i can't just sit down in a chair like i used to right and i'm not i'm i i've worked, worked through it i'm just saying it's like and it's it's become a place of strength for me you see what i'm saying that's why i'm saying like this is every 
everyone has this in their life. Everyone has this in their life, but what are you doing with it? Are you, are you looking for that place in which God has allowed that splinter, like St. Paul in the flesh, so that he can use you? You can't build an institution unless you can say to your spiritual father, to me, to your friend, to your brother, this is my splinter. Like, I'll sit down. We can, like, cut right now, start again, and we'll spend another two hours. And I'm just telling you, right, because, like, I'm opinionated on stuff. But, like, the thing is, is, like, come at me. I'm more, I'm talking about things. Like, I'm not saying anything that I'm not actually doing, right? I'll just talk in another two hours about my splinters, about my weaknesses, and about all these. Because that's how I know crisis in my life. I don't know crisis in my life because I have a beautiful wife, a parish that loves me, like, that's not it. I'm don't get me wrong. I'm grateful because I remember sleeping on a floor in a shooting gallery. But see the way I said that, that's my strength. I can look people and I go like, you know, someone's like, they want to talk to me about the tradition and half the night, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, shut up. I slept on the floor in a shooting gallery with blood on the ceiling. Don't talk to me about whatever. You know what I mean? That's my strength. And anyone can have that. Cause the, the thing is, is as Christians, right, it rains on the just and the unjust alike. But when it rains for us, we fill our cisterns. Right. Instead of complaining about the rain, we fill our cisterns. So that's the thing is you can't build an institution unless, you, unless you're a strong soul. And a strong soul is not someone who's strong out of vanity. A strong soul is someone who's like, I have borne the cross and I will continue to bear every cross that my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gives me. Period. And that's the whole thing. That's why all of this kind of vehemence and all this whatever about whatever, because like none of this that people are talking about is about bearing the cross. And I'm just like, we need to be cross bearers. That's how you build strong institutions. Right. And Father, that's you know that you know it's not a forgive me, you know it's not about bearing the cross because they want to do those things. Like this is the interesting thing about any history I've read about anybody who has actually been a builder of institutions, almost to the one, they're like this is not what I wanted to be doing. Mm -mm. I was called to it. I had to do it. It was, it had to be done. And so I did it, but I definitely did at the time. I was like, why do I have, why does this have to be me? God. Mm -hmm. And that's how, you know, and that's my, that's again, that's the thing is like in my life, that's where my strength and my, he, he is my strength in my song because I know him by, by the marks that I bear. Not the not the blessings, because those can be taken away just like that, right? But blessed be the name of the Lord who giveth and taketh away. It's I go like I know Christ is in my life because of the crosses and the and the wounds that I've that I bear, and like not reluctantly, not begrudgingly. That that's the point. Because if you're complaining about it, then you lose that crown, right? This and this is our orientation. See, this is the thing is. This should be every single one of our orientations, but it's not. It's not. Yeah. And this is not popular. In fact, this, 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 in some respects, if you have those who have ears to hear, what, what I'm saying, what we've been saying tonight, especially this is the gospel. Yeah. And the gospel is not popular. I don't care what anyone thinks. It's like, yeah. Orthodoxy, it's like there's this cat, whatever. I, you know, I have no problem. Broken clock is right twice in a day. There's this one cat, one name of who he is, but that's a great point. It's like, yeah, kind of orthodoxy happens, kind of like it's a it's a nirvana moment, you know. It's like, yeah, kind of maybe starting is, and like I'm all for that. I'm all for fishing. I'm all for like like I want these nets to burst. I'm all for it, but I'm not all for it for like what people think. I'm all for it because, like I said, I want my master to receive every bit of the fruits of his suffering. And if, if you feel that's melodramatic or too, whatever, I don't really care. That's, that's my life. That's how I live it. And so the thing is, is that the reality of the popularity that Orthodoxy is, you know, experiencing, it's like the fish getting cleaned, the way they get cleaned is, are they going to actually engage the spiritual life, which is the cross? There is no other thing. Like when it comes down to it, do you want the uncut stuff or not? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, speaking of, you ever build the wall? Yeah. Like the Floyd? Yeah. No, like, did you build, build the wall to Mexico? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Build the build the the border wall. Yeah. So he built it. It's built. He built some of it. Yeah. I don't think so. End of the show. That's all I'm saying. I mean, that was like <laughs> I I went back and I went back and I was watching some of his like. You know, he's funny. Really, really funny. And like, I don't know if I'd ever seen that clip in its oh, entirety. He's so a, great. He's an incredible, incredible. He's incredible. The other week we were he's talking about it. That entertainer. Dinner, he's incredible. That charity That's why I say it's like I'm not anti Trump. I think he's in and he's an he's incredible great. person. And the thing is, he is a fascinating person. Yeah. He will put a spell on you. He yeah. does have that talent. He's yeah. an incredible, incredible. Uh, extraordinary individual. But it being an incredible, extraordinary individual is not that I'm going to hand over my my spiritual uh, <laughs> his spiritual leadership uh, or my followership at a spiritual level to this man or worship at his altar because so he's worldly. incredible. So worldly. It's crazy. It's well, crazy. I think that's two hours. About. So, but anyway, oh, what I was saying was that he yeah. um, he had a yeah, so we're going to, if you want to contact us, it's uh, contact at royalpath.network. Uh, if you want to reach out to the general one, um, the general one, uh, or you can reach out to me and Andrew at royalpath.network. Um, I'm still trying hard to respond to people when I get them, so uh, I think I'm all caught up maybe. But um, yeah, it usually takes a little bit longer. If you want to reach out to me first, you can. Um, uh, anytime we mention music, we try and put it on a playlist. It's on Spotify and Apple. I the links in the description. And, um, but it's World Podcast, World Podcast playlist, something like that. Uh, so then Mount Tabor, um, the Scola copy. Uh, Mount Tabor is the school that's associated with St. Mary's, and Scola is the copy that is made at that school. Um, it's part of the program. And uh, to check it out it's really good uh i've gotten a lot of people to try it and they really really like it. Uh, my wife is pretty particular about coffee and she likes quite a bit so um uh then uh, jack you're killing it with the uh mm -hmm. the, yeah the always the thumbnails are, thumbnails. are fantastic yeah, yeah you they're see really it. good lately yeah they? well 100 percent. i haven't seen a bad one yet to be honest yeah, like no. that's a pretty great success like that's a pretty great eight really great um, I think that is it. Uh, oh, and we have a merch store, royalpath.store. Um, we don't see any of that money. Uh, I have no idea how that store is oh, we're still selling merch, but some, yeah, so I mean, it's been uh, there's been a there's people have have bought, there's been a little bit, it's gone to the parish, yeah. so uh, you know, it gets paypal over. Yeah, so, that's cool, yeah. that's tight. Um, so yeah, uh, feel free to reach out, feel free to check out the store. And thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.